Hi everyone, we're here for puppy lesson three today. And the things we're going to look at in this session are getting your dog to settle on the mat by themselves. Oh, look, that was on cue, yes. And we're going to look at things that potentially could scare your dog. We're going to look at teaching them to sit and stay. And we'll have a look at some toys and recommendations that we have around toys. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at two ways to teach your dog that the mat is a good place and that we want them to stay to go there and be settled. The first one is a really easy one. Tether your dog to something. It doesn't need to be around the leg of something you're sitting on. It could be on a coffee table over there and the dog's just out of your reach. And when they settle themselves, you say, yes, I'll pay sit, I'll also pay lie down. I don't tell them to do that. That can come later. We sort of want them to discover how great it is to actually get on the mat and sit or lie down. So I love this one because people can take it easy. They don't feel like I'm saying, get out and do 10 minutes practice. You can do it in front of the television. You can do it when there are visitors coming. You can do it out the back in the open. Yes. So it's a wonderful strategy that teaches the dog there are boundaries. Sometimes you're not included in the main action. It's also a great preparation for if you're planning to have a cosmopolitan dog and take them to coffee shops or other places in public where you want them to be calm and have good social manners. So that's my first really easy one. In the next segment, we'll look at one that directs the dog to the mat and ends up giving us a cue that we can say to the dog and they will actually get onto the mat. So that one's coming up. Okay, this is the mat exercise that has a bit more structure. What we're gonna do is to get the dog to still want to go to that mat, and but we want them to do it on their own He's on the mat now, so I'm gonna say yes, and I'm going to throw it on the mat. So I'm not gonna give it out of my hand because it takes his focus off the mat. I'm gonna go yes. Now I'm going to call him away momentarily. Reggie, come. Reggie, come. Now I'm going to bring him back towards the mat, but I'm gonna leave it totally up to him. He's on the mat, yes. Yes. And we want him to think that they're coming from heaven. Yes. Oops. We take him away. Reggie, come. Reggie, come. Take him back towards the mat. We wait for him to get on the mat. And we go, yes. Yes. So it's all low stress. It's the puppy making the choice and discovering that the mat is where it's at. It's such a good place to go to. If he hangs around on the mat, I'll drop again. I want him to think that the mat is giving him treats. I want him to think that the best place to go is on the mat so that Things will fall out of the sky. I call him away. Reggie, come. I take him back. I wait for him to put any proportion of his body on there. Yes. Yes. Oops. Okay, he missed both of those. Oh, yes. Good boy. That was in his mouth. Should have been on the mat. Yes. Okay, I call him away. Reggie, come. Reggie, come. Reggie. When you're feeling fairly confident that they're going to go onto the mat, that's the time that you start to use words to tell them what they're doing. So I'm fairly sure he's going to go on. So I come over and I say, on your mat, yes. And I drop the treat. He was already going to do it, but now I give it a name. So they're the steps that you're going to work towards to get your puppy to understand that on your mat means get on that thing. We'll do one more with him. 
Reggie, come. I'll name it this time when I'm pretty sure he's going on. On your mat. Yes, drop. 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 Yes. I usually say to people, when you're teaching the puppy, do five or so minutes of this, then do the one where you tether them and sit nearby as the follow-up segment so that they well and truly get a clear understanding about how good it is to be on this mat. So good luck with that exercise. It's great when you've got that cue to give to the dog and there's nothing wrong with securing the tether at any stage, even when they're an adult, just to say, no, it's mat time now. Okay, good luck with that. The next part of our lesson is about desensitization to the environment. And it's such an important component of a puppy's life and development. It needs to be tackled head on when the puppy is under 18 weeks of age. They are born being quite sensitive to everything around them. They leave the litter, they come into an environment that's got lawn mowers and hair dryers and people who look weird and people who smell weird and things that go ping and pong and, and all sorts of weird things. So we need to desensitize them. And the easiest thing to use for desensitization is food. Now there's a difference between desensitization and exposure. If you go around introducing your puppy to everything at full volume, you're likely to push them over a coping threshold anyway. So I'll show you with this foot pump. Okay, so what we need to do is to let him know that it's okay, I might even give him a treat just for investigating it. Then I might let it make a little sound and give him a treat. And then I might make a bigger sound. Yes. And then I might make a bigger couple of sounds. Yes. More sounds. Yes. But I want him to grow up to be a puppy who goes, you know what? When new unexpected stuff happens to me in my world, I don't panic. So there would be millions of items and sounds and interactions in a dog's total life. We can't do them all, but we will do as many as we can. I've got a tiny selection here. Okay, just a little horn like that. Another point for desensitization is touch. They're not, often they're not gonna love being brushed. So you would brush and feed at the same time. So that the dog knows it's happening, but knows it's quite a pleasant thing because they get little treats as it's happening. This is also good for when they're having a bath, use a treat or a few treats. Then there are things that make just weird sounds like this item here. I don't want to scare him. I could just drop them on the ground so that while he's fossicking, he hears that sound. Or I can put them straight in his mouth. If he was too frightened of this, I would move further away. I would do it slower if I could. You want the dog not to be overexposed. Overexposed would be terrible because then you'd be undoing uh, a phobia, really. Okay, a little tambourine, if I haven't heard it before. A little bit of food. Yay, happy sounds. Yay, happy sounds. The pop of an umbrella is quite scary, and yet we'd like, we're not going to pop umbrellas all their lives, but it's another example of a sudden noise, and we want them to know that sudden noises aren't that scary. Notice I'm reaching right behind. Pop, food. Okay, not in their faces, not to make them jump big, pop, food. So yes, he gave a little flinch, but then was quite happy to take the food. You know when your dog is not coping, and that will be when they can't take the food. 
they've had the the um, the stimulus, but they're then too wary to take food. So be cautious of that. It's very important to get them used to being handled, as you did in your second lesson. Find it. Find it. Good boy. Uh, notice how I can use find it to just reconnect with him, bring him to where I want him to be. Okay, this is a little Fisher Price uh, syringe, but even practicing things like grabbing the back of his neck because that's where the vet is going to use the syringe, go through the motions, give him some food. Yes. Just pretend. Yes. Any sort of handling that's going to be unusual to him, try to do it at home so he gets used to it. I've even got my Fisher-Price stethoscope. There's nothing wrong with actually going through the motions of going to him like this, looking a bit weird. Give him a treat afterwards. Okay, if you change appearance, and nobody's to laugh at this, but if you change appearance and look like somebody else that can be a bit scary so hello yes weird person hello yes getting to look at me hello yes different voices okay changing it up whenever you can environmental noises like vacuum cleaners whipper snippers lawn mowers hair dryers now what I've got here is a hairdryer and I've got the sound of a hairdryer that I'm going to play, but he's going to see the hairdryer. You could do it just by sight, first of all. Look at that. Yes. Show him this weird thing. Dogs can also be scared of weird shapes. Yes. Okay, then I could put the sound on as well. which gets him used to it. Okay, sudden sounds like this, when they're when it's big and invasive, you know, aim it away. I'll just get the treat in my hand right ready. And a bit of food. If they won't take the food, you were too close. If they want to eat the streamers, pick them up quickly. Reggie, come. Reggie, come. Find it. Yes, good boy. Okay, now we will also just alert you to an app that you can get for your phone that has, it's called Soundproof Puppy Training. And you can start with the sounds down quite low and build up the puppy's resistance to them. You could just give them food while it's playing you could have them eating dinner and you play a few sounds while they're eating a yummy bowl of food. You could get them to watch while the sound is playing or you could just throw, you just do a find it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, play a sound. Watch, yes. Strange sound, watch, yes. Scary sound sometimes. Here's another one. Watch. Yes. So strange sound, but comfortable and secure that he's being handled in this way. Okay, I'll take you. There are about three or four pages in this app, all with really good sounds. Here's a power saw. Tricky. Tricky. Find it. There's a whole host of sounds on here. There's a helicopter. Watch. Yes. Watch. Yes. A very annoying couple of sounds on the last page.
Now he seems pretty chilled about the police. I hope he hasn't had a run in before. And of course there's this household sound. Reggie, watch. Yes. Watch. Watch. Yes. So, Reggie's pretty chilled about a lot of this. It doesn't mean he doesn't need it. This is the one of the reasons I say to people, always carry this. When your puppy's getting old enough to go out into new places, they're gonna see, hear, and smell things that they haven't encountered before. And you wanna be able to reassure them with that food backup. So, um, that's a little taste of sound desensitization. Anything that's new, your best solution is find it or watch or just put food in their mouths. So get ready to give your dog a whole lot of sound exposure, sight exposure, so that they become bomb proof. That's what we want. So our next section for today is to get our dogs to sit and then stay. Sit. We want the dog to understand that when we say stay and we move away, they're not gonna follow us. And when we come back, they're not gonna get up until we've said yes. Okay, so in the beginning, if your puppy is very, very wriggly, you may have to do sit and then stay. Yes, and just pay them for sitting still. Stay. Yes. When they get a little bit more reliable, you'll do sit, you'll do stay, and you'll move maybe one foot. Yes. Stay is about them tolerating movement and not going anywhere. So this, one of the smallest movements is stay, one foot. Yes. You can build on from there to stay. Maybe a little rocking step. Yes. And your yes is at the end of the sit still period. Stay, step back, wait momentarily, return, yes, and pay. You'll notice that this hand, I don't have any food in this. If I've got food in this and I'm telling the dog to stay, they're gonna to wanna to follow my food hand. So you'll notice I'm putting the food across into my other hand. Reggie, sit. Yes, stay, I go back, I come forward, I say yes, and I pay. Okay, I might go back two steps. Reggie, stay, a couple of steps. I might wait a little bit longer, and then I'll come back and say yes. So that's your very simplest way to do stay, but remember we're doing puppies. As we go on and teach adolescent classes, we get them to do more things to tolerate the environment during a stay. So have fun with that one. So we're here to talk about toys. This scene is my worst nightmare. Putting out a backyard or a back room full of dog toys where the dog is surrounded by so much, it's almost like spoiled child syndrome. They don't know what to play with. Sometimes they just don't even notice they're there. You wanna keep the toys special. You wanna keep them put away where the dog can't access them and each day change the toys over. You'll keep them more interested. They'll also start to understand that you control the resources. And this is an important concept for dogs to gain. We need the dog to understand that anything they need comes out of our hands and we can even ask them to earn it with a sit or a down or a watch. But this scene, not a great idea. Keep them put away and do a couple at a time. Now I want to talk about the different sorts of toys that are available and their advantages or limitations. So let's take a look at stuffed toys, soft stuffed toys. For some dogs, once they realize that that white fluffy snow comes out and makes a snowstorm, they are then hell bent on meeting any fluffy toy and pulling out the snow. 
So um, for my dogs, they discovered that early and soft, stuffed, fluffy toys, not a good idea. Um, the other thing is toys with squeakers. My dogs are very good at disemboweling toys. So I don't want my dogs to play with toys that have got squeakers easy to get out because I don't want one to end up going down someone's throat. So that's the caution with a stuffed toy. Some companies that have now got clever and they make a toy with no stuffing. So this bear is as flat as it can be. My dogs can't pull anything out of this. It's got crinkly noise in its head and lots of dogs really love that. So that can be quite attractive. But remember, if you're monitoring and counting out the toys and taking them away, the toys will stay in good order. You need to be aware, you almost need to do a stock check of your toys. And when they start to lose their arms or stuffing starts to come out, it's time to either throw them away or sew them up tightly. Some people go to Vinnie's or the Salvos and they get secondhand kids toys. A big caution there because the toys weren't made for dogs teeth and you don't want stuff coming out of the toys and being ingested by your dog because things like stuffing in soft toys doesn't show up in an x-ray. So I've known more than one story of a dog needing to be opened up to get out the blockage in there from toys that have been uh, handled wrongly. So there are some tough toys on the market. So this particular one, which I think is by Outward Hound, it's a squeaky toy, very attractive for dogs to, to come and play with. No stuffing and no squeakers. I don't understand what the mechanics are, but there are quite firm sections in here I've got two dogs that are really rough on the mouth and they still have not caused any harm to this one. Okay, other toys that are good are toys that are hard. This one is uh, called, uh, from a company called Westpaw. Very spongy but chewy. My dogs, there aren't even teeth marks in this. So just a good one for them to play with together. Um, a, a toy also, this is also by West Paw. This is a good toy for them just to play with, but this one also has a gap in there and you can get quite creative and put um, a wet food in there and freeze it. And then the dogs can enjoy getting the food out. It wobbles around, so it means they've got to work out how to hold it still with their paws. So that's a company called West Paw. Okay. Um, that leads me to, oh, what about a rope for tug? Dogs can tug between each other. That's an okay game. That's something that they do. You could tie this to some sort of a bungee arrangement that your dog could enjoy the pull motion, but not against a human. We advise that if you're going to play tug with the dog, you actually teach the dog a word that means they can have it now. So if I've got a dog in front of me, I've taught them that they can't take it, even though it's very tempting, until I say a word like yours. That means they can start, tug, 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 but I've taught them a word that means stop right now, and it could be mine. So in the middle of the tug, I go, mine, dog needs to let go. Dog needs to also understand that their teeth must not come up onto your hands. If they come onto your hands, the game is over. It actually has nothing to do with whether or not you win the game or the dog wins the game. It's got to do with you starting and finishing the game. Okay, and then it won't end in tears. Yours or the dogs. Okay, toys like this are tempting for tug with the dog, but not a good idea unless you've taught the rules. There's crinkly paper in here. That's a fairly firm rope, but at the back, my dogs have started to get the stuffing out. So my eyes are very close on that because I don't want deterioration and to have my dogs eat it. So they're toys for general play. Toys that will be even more engaging and maybe keep them more busy are toys that you can put food in 
but the toys are tough enough that the dog's not going to damage them and the dog's not going to choke on them if you leave them with those toys. In a minute, I'll be back and I'll show you a couple of models of those. Okay, leave alone toys that dogs can uh, access food from uh, have got to be made out of tough material. This is a buster cube. It has a hole in one side. When you drop the dry food or dry treats in, don't put wet food in it, uh, it sort of gets trapped a bit in some compartments down there. So it means that the dog needs to roll it over and learn and be patient for the food to come out on the side that they're looking for. Have a go of that one. Okay, this one is a Kong Wobbler. There are a couple of companies that make similar sorts of things. It's weighted at the bottom. It's going to do what the name says and it's going to wobble on the ground. So Reggie can smell the food in the Buster Cube and it's a great mental exercise for him to work out, well, how can I get food? So he's having to work for what he gets and use his brain and solve problems. And I think we probably get a smarter dog. Maybe his IQ points will go up. All right, so I'm putting treats in the in the wobbler as well and I'll put that down and we'll see if he wants to have a wobble of that one so if they're sturdy enough and so that um, that buster cube has just rolled and he hasn't realized that food came out of it but he's now found it so it's a bit of trial and error but it's lovely to see them learning so if they're tough enough that you're confident that the dog's not going to choke on them that the dog's not going to um, destroy it, and both of those, I've never had a dog destroy either of those, uh, then they're your answer for babysitting for your dog. Okay, the next section I'll show you some puzzles. Now the third category of toy is the puzzle. And these are toys that must be supervised. You wouldn't leave any of these in the yard with the dog on their own because most dogs would chew the parts of them and rendering them useless. So puzzles will come in different sizes and different qualities. Kmart sells a number of puzzles. They're very cheap and they're quite clever. You just, you must supervise them with your dog. So this little puzzle here has little lids that roll over and lock into place. Now a dog like Reggie, if I lock those right over, he probably won't have any idea how to get them open. And the other factor of this is that it spins. So if I was going to teach Reggie to start to understand this toy, I would put treats in the open faces of the round pieces and I wouldn't even flip them over at all. I just get him used to the fact that this is going to move. Reggie, Reggie, come. So he's investigating. It's rotating a little bit, but he's just getting the idea that I can get food out of there. Even when it's moving, I'm not gonna be scared of it. It's worthwhile investigating. So to take him to the next stage, I would put food in these little cups and I would tilt them over, but I wouldn't click them closed. So I would just do a little light flip over. And then I would see if he can almost by accident work out that they flip open. So the pink one just absolutely flipped and he realized there was something good in there. Ah, the next one flipped and he's realized there was something good in there. So sometimes with these toys, you need to teach them in stages. So he's just investigating flipping those open. This is quite a reasonably priced uh, puzzle and it's called Aiku and it's got moving sections into which you can put the food. You might start with the section half closed. 
so that when the dog puts their nose in, they realize there's movement. This middle section has got ridges so their paw can learn to turn it round and put food in those sections. You might even need to be there to help it turn in the beginning. But that's a good sturdy one. Some people like to feed their dinner in that. So the dog's got to do that little bit more thinking and working to get the food out of their toy. So then there are more expensive and harder puzzles than the two you've just seen. This little one here is a new one of mine and it's got three different things that happen on it. You put treats in here and the dog needs to slide the section over to get it out. You put food in here and the dog has to move the lever to get it open. I'll just turn it that way, move the lever. And I forgot the two pieces for here. There's pegs that go in there and cover the treats and the dog has to lift the peg out and get the treats out. You would teach this sort of puzzle in sections. You would teach just this one and not even engage them on the others. Then you would move to the next one and then you would join those two together. There are lots and lots on the market, but let me emphasize again that the puzzle ones are really for your organized play with your dog. It's a session of puzzles. It's a session of training, really. So there you are for lesson three. I hope that gives you a nice round up there and we'll look forward to lesson four when we're ready to bring that to you. Thank you.